In this video, we explore the use of menus in Android, specifically the Options menu and Action Bar. This is the first part of a two-part series on menus. This is also the perfect setting to internalize minimum SDK versus target SDK in compatibility mode. The objectives are stated here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. This is a short preview of a longer video. Visit ProfessorAndroid.com for more information. Okay, so it's time for us to take a look at menus. It'll be helpful for this particular demo if you go out to the Android developer website and read the section on menus, paying particular attention to the area that discusses option menus and action bars. All right, so I'm assuming you've done that. I'm going to start a project from scratch rather than starting with a skeleton project that has some things stubbed out like I sometimes do because there's some things I have to do differently than I normally do that I don't want you to miss. So I'm just going to come in here and say File New Android Application Project. I'm going to give the project name Menus. And then this time I'm going to leave these two basic settings alone. These would be the settings you have if you're building against SDK 20 with the ADT Plugin 20. This is what you're going to get. But I'm going to leave this on Android 4.1, the highest API I have installed on my system, Jelly Bean. And I'm going to leave this set on API 8, Android 2.2. And then we'll just go ahead and change this to com.professorandroid.menus. We'll create a custom icon. I like the Android dude you used to get with previous versions of the SDK. So I have that saved and I'm going to select that. And I prefer to give that a black background. Okay, going forward, we're just going to go with blank activity and say let's create that activity and give it the name of main activity is great. I'm going to go ahead and switch this around. I'm not used to naming it activity first yet and just call it main, but I will start tagging on underscore activity and start naming my fragments some name underscore fragment to make it explicitly clear which layout files belong to activities and which layout files belong to fragments because they co-mingle in the same directory. Okay, and then we'll just click Finish. Okay, now, right off the bat, a few things to notice about this project, because I haven't targeted API 16 before. Notice it makes a couple additional values folders. Values v11, values v14, and what are those? Well, those are resources, and if you go out to the resources documentation on the website, you'll see it's the lowest order of precedence on a resource folders. And what's happening is, is these values folders are being given a qualifier based off of the API that's installed on the device that the program is running on. Therefore, under this naming scenario, any version of Android API 10 and below will pick up from the values folder and 11, 12, and 13 will get picked up on the values-v11 folder and any API 14 above will pick up resources on the v14 folder. And of course, if you look inside these two folders, all that's there that styles in terms of what the application should look like, and they're still placing all of the actual strings only in this folder. So even if you're on API 14, you'll grab your styles here but you'll grab your string values from here. That's really the only thing that's different in this project than previous skeleton projects we've created before. Okay, let me just get all this other clutter out of the way and if I click here and say, open a new window, then that will allow me to not look at all my previous projects and focus on just the one we're working on today. Now, one other thing I wanna mention, we know that we selected our build SDK and we selected API 16 when we created that project. That's why we see this folder right here, Android 4.1. And if we expand that, all that's doing is pointing to where we installed those SDKs, and that's the SDK it's using to build our project against, the build SDK. Now, normally when you create a project, and it creates this manifest file for you automatically, it sets a node inside that manifest file that we can look at right here, and it sets a target SDK version. And 
as far as I'm aware, it's always set the target SDK to the same as the build SDK that we're building against. And I'm going to go ahead and change that right now. But we're going to have a good opportunity to discuss these minimum SDKs and target SDKs in more detail in just a minute and look at how those can change the behavior of our application. Okay, so notice, in our resources folder, we do have a menus folder. Our menus folder has a main activity, XML, it gave it the same name automatically as the one in the layout folder. So this is saying, what should my main activity look like? And this is saying, what should the menu for my main activity look like? And also, when we look at our activity here, we automatically have an on create options menu, and this goes out and inflates, creates the menu for our main activity. Okay, so where do we go from here? Let's just go into this main activity XML layout file, go into XML view, and examine it a little bit. Now, I'm not going to use externalized strings to make this demo abundantly clear, but of course you're always going to use externalized strings. So let's just come in here and change this to menu settings one and change the title of this to menu dash one. And then we're gonna copy and paste that, oh, just maybe like three times, and change this to settings two for the ID and settings three for the ID, and menu two, and menu three. Control Shift F will format that XML for you, clean it up nicely. All right, so a couple things to talk about before we go any further. Notice that this stubbed them out with a few interesting properties. One was an order in category, and this specifies what order are they going to appear in in the list when they're displayed. And all of these were given a default value of 100. If we don't have this property at all and we're not required to, we can delete it. They're just going to appear in the menu in the order that they're displayed. Now, if you're dealing with fragments and you know activities can host many fragments and the activities have menu items and the fragments have menu items that they're going to say, yo, activity, show this menu item within you, then the menu items in the activity are going to display followed by the menu items in the first fragment, followed by the menu items in the second fragment. The reason for this property is to give you more control on the order in which they appear. And you could call this number one and this number two and this number three, and then they're going to appear in the order they appear now. If we numbered this one, two, and three, then the bottom one's going to appear first in the menu, and so on. The second property we can actually delete too, and I am for now. It's called show as action. For now, we're going to delete that and we're gonna come back to that property later. So let's just delete it for now, and let's control shift F again. And it's not gonna hurt us to just go ahead and leave that order in category property right there. Now the next thing I wanna do is come into my virtual device manager and really get an understanding of how these option menus and action bars work. We need to test this against several different emulators. So I'm gonna start by creating a Jelly Bean tablet. I'll get the details of that the main thing is I've selected WXGA800 on API 16. I'm going to start that in motion and giving it an 11 inch screen size to look good in my videos. And give that a moment to start creating. I find if I fire these up one right after the other, right after the other, and don't give them all a chance to build, sometimes they muck up. Okay, so that one's near building. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come out here and also create a Jelly Bean phone. Main difference between that one and the previous one is this is WVGA800. So we're going to go ahead and start that up and give that phone a screen size of 7 and launch a second emulator. So we have a Jelly Bean phone and a Jelly Bean tablet. Then the other thing we need to do so that we can really work with the option menus, is we need to create ourselves at least one device on API 10, spin up yet a third emulator, and that's just WVGA 800 building against API 10. Let's start that up and also give it a screen size of seven. And we'll find that actually won't be enough to really know how these work 
In a minute, we're going to find out we need to spin up a fourth emulator.